Welcome to Sports Central. As you well know by now, it's Thursday. That means that you're guaranteed for your weekly fix of the best in sports action. And you know what? It doesn't matter where you're tuned in, you're guaranteed for an awesome show. Yes, if you're in Kisumu, all the way to Mombasa. From Turkana to Lamu. Alafu pia watu warongai, asanteni sana for tuning in. Of course, uh, this is that one place where you get to enjoy great sporting action. And we're your hosts, Mike Mondo. And I'm Wanjira Longauer. Well, coming up first on Sports Central, we got to look at all the action when it came to the East Africa Inner City Basketball Tournament. Plus, we get to link up with, uh, well, the weightlifting champion Mercy Obiero, and she'll tell us more about her sport. Oof, that's one lady I'm not trying to mess with. And thereafter, we also check out what's going on with the iconic Kenya 15s forward, Joshua Chisanga, but first on Sports Central. Let's get into a hangout with the members of the Kenya Pool Association as they host us for an interesting matchup. Welcome Sports Central. Tonight here at Crooked Q, we're going to be having some big money games between the top African players and the top East African players. There'll be some awesome games going on tonight. A lot of money up in stake. This is actually the biggest battle in East Africa so far. So we've just witnessed one hell of a battle between Ishmael Mbedo from South Africa versus Hazard Lukomo from Uganda. So Ishmael, how did you find the match? Uh, look, I had a very good match. It, it was a tough match, uh, like judging from the previous matches. So I had to take it serious, you know. I had to make sure I win this one. For anyone in Kenya or in East Africa who wants to come for any pool challenges, Crooked Q is the place to come. Till then, keep it Sports Central. The East Africa Inner City Basketball Tournament, recently held at Nyayo Stadium, actually brought together six teams from select East African cities. Great basketball action did go down, especially as teams from different sides comprising of top male all-stars from different parts of the cities came together to compete. Have a look at how it all went down. The Africa City Challenge is a Pan-African basketball tournament between the best young male teams from the top basketball cities across Africa. With the East African edition serving as the first round, basketball lovers were treated to some exciting display by the select side from the region's top cities, namely Nairobi, Mombasa, Mogadishu, Kampala, Juba and Dar es Salaam. When it came to the business end, it was up to Kampala City Red Stars to battle with Nairobi Morans who were looking to make the most of their home advantage. The Morans made known their intentions as they crossed to half-time on the lead and came back to see off the game with a full-time score of 71-49 and a claim to the tournament trophy.
the best thing we have had since uh, sliced bread. Because <laughs> uh, guys have to, like, uh, guys are coming out here, guys are showing off their talents. As you can see, we have great, great talent in Kenya, Somalia, Uganda. We have battled well. Yeah. Okay, so today was all about just getting back to playing team team basketball, you know. We uh, we played them earlier and they still had confidence and they were like, we're gonna fight, we're gonna get you in the final and we gonna, we're gonna beat you. So as pride as sports pride, you know, when you play sports, you gotta have some type of pride. So our pride could not let us lose another lose a game to them again, you know? Because we already won before and we had the confidence that we're gonna win. So just that just played out for us. We are happy with what we have got. Third position is not that bad. We are happy. Man, it's always great to win, whether you're at home or away, but it feels way better because you're at home, you know? So the fact that we're in Nairobi and we play for Nairobi and we won for Nairobi we're in front of all these fans, you know, it always feels great. My name is Tom Bush, I'm Makoto, MVP, Africa City Challenge, keep it sports central. Welcome back and just in case you are joining in, this is Sports Central, the show that guarantees your weekly fix of sports action. Well, our next story is fascinating indeed. It's all about pushing it to the limit with Mercy Obiero. I'm loving the way her name sounds, but I'm loving what she's doing even more. In case you yourself are not familiar with Mercy, she's Kenya's first female Olympian weightlifter. Yes, and the fact that it is a male-dominated sport, we go ahead and take a look at how she started off and of course how she plans on challenging some of the world's greats. Have a look. Weightlifting is very challenging. I love challenging stuff. So it's been very interesting and motivating. I have to keep up the hard work. I'm a bronze medalist, all Africa Games, so I want to fall into the medal bracket at the Commonwealth Games, so I really have to really work hard and show good performance. My name is Marcio Bire, and I've been doing weightlifting since 2000. Before I was playing hockey in school and I was running as well, so I decided to switch into weightlifting because I thought that's where I could push my strength to a higher level. It's been very challenging, especially from the start. I almost gave up. Through the week, uh, starting from Monday through to Saturday, I train three hours a day, sometimes even twice a day, if I have enough time. But I always give myself three hours in a day, six days a week for training. Before, always before my workout, I have to come in, do a little bit, little bit of stretches, warming up, a little bit of warming up, and then I can start up with my lifts. In weightlifting, you have to be very careful because when you're lifting heavy weights, like for example squatting, you need to support your back. We have a very good belt which you put on when you're squatting. When you're doing the clean and jack, because you have to support your back, keep it well in position. Yeah, and you also use good technique. We have very good technique to when you're doing weightlifting, so that's what helps you not get injuries. So, a snatch movement, snatch movement, the one who lifts the highest, the heaviest weight in the Anapata, the more points. In the clean and jack, you get the weight from down to shoulder level, then you push it overhead. Okay, the snatch movement is just one movement. Get the weight from down, pull it all the way up. Just one movement for the snatch. We've participated in all Africa Games, Commonwealth Games. We've gone, I've gone up to Olympic Games, London 2012. 
And my best, best moment was at the All Africa Games Congo Brazzaville 2015, where I won three bronze medals. Yeah. Then the following year, 2016, we had uh, Olympic qualifiers for Rio, and uh, I managed to get uh, silver in the clean and jack and bronze in the snatch. Actually, there's a few lifters who I look up to. Most of them are men, like uh, this guy, he's called Kechanke from Cameroon. He's a very strong guy in weightlifting, 85 category. He's very inspiring. I always watch his videos and I follow him on Instagram. And we also have ladies like uh, Janet Thelamont from Seychelles, very strong lady as well, yeah. Lifting in Kenya is not very popular, like football and athletics and rugby. Maybe we need to get more coverage in the TV, media, but it's a good spot coming up. We're introducing kids into it. I've got five young girls I'm training at the moment, including my daughter, so that they can pick up also. Uh, weightlifting is a very good spot for men, ladies, girls, boys, even kids as young as seven years old can do weightlifting. And it's also good for ladies because you end up toning up, keeping fit, it works your cardiovascular area, and it's a good thing. For the men also, it gives you good physique, you balance your whole body, you strengthen your back muscles, your hands, your legs, your arms, shoulders. So it's a full body workout for everyone. Yo, Mike, that is not a lady you want to meet on like the middle of a street and start getting into a fight with. Yeah, no, <laughs> does look, but she's doing great things, man. She's crushing limits. She's surpassing everything that she set out to do. Yeah. What I want to know is when you're in the gym next time, mm -hmm. you're going to stack up on the weights and Still try Still working on that one pack, though. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to get to the weights. But yes, yeah, so speaking of uh, crushing limits, our next story is all about Joshua Chisanga. He is the first Kenyan rugby player to go pro playing for the Newcastle Falcons and is also a part of the Kenya 15 side playing as a forward. Well, Sports Central went ahead and linked up with Joshua to find out how his career is going so far. Take a look. Described as a powerful and athletic presence in the back row, Joshua Chisanga began his rugby journey at Hana International School in Kampala, Uganda, before returning to Kenya. I played a tournament, I played the Nakuru 10s for Machine, then I played a bit of the Inter Enterprise Cup and the Chairman's Cup. Then after that, I featured for the Kenya Under-19s. We went to Zimbabwe. After Under-19s, I uh, joined Homeboys officially. Persistence in the sport, coupled by a series of high performances, impressed the Kenya 15 selectors, earning him inclusion in the 2014 squad for the Vodacom Cup, which is a South African provincial tournament that at the time included a Kenyan representative side. It was in my final year when they kind of formed a 15s side. And I was like, hey, that could be me, because I was interested in homeboys because of their sound engineering and their music production. So I thought that could be an avenue for me to gain that experience per se. So yeah, I've always wanted to join Homeboys and then I worked for them for a little bit before I, I went to, I, went, I joined Newcastle in the UK. After a series of caps for the national side, Chisanga was invited to Newcastle for a trial before being offered a permanent contract with the Kingston Park Club. So we're playing in this tournament called the Vodacom Cup and um, there were agents at this tournament, you know, just watching the game and all that. This agent asked if I have an agent representing me. I didn't have an agent. I didn't even know I'm supposed to have an agent at the time. So he introduced me to a friend of his who works in London and he told me to send him some clips of me playing and I sent him uh, clips from Vodacom Cup. The only challenge was that they were not exposed to Kenya or Kenyan players. So that was a challenge because it was like, it was diving into the unknown and no one was kind of willing to take that risk.
he said there's an opportunity with uh, Newcastle. They just want to taste to test you and see, you know, where it goes. I was like, hey, why not? They're paying for the flights. They're, they were paying for everything, and they wanted to see how I do. And you never know who you meet out there. So I went out there, did my medical, did my physicals. Yeah, played one game, scored twice, and I signed a contract. Yeah, and that's how Newcastle happened. It was an experience because I've always wanted, you know, to play top flight rugby wherever I go. That's that's been my dream ever since I can remember, you know. Um, and back in the day, if you didn't play in the Super Series, you know, you're just not worth talking about or even looking at. Even though Chisanga's exciting technique to ball carrying and physical play has proved valuable for Newcastle, professional rugby is quite different from what he was previously used to. It's different. It's nothing I've ever experienced. The closest I've come to an experience like that was the two months that we spent in uh, South Africa. And the attention to detail is amazing, you know. Uh, you have feedback for everything, for your body position, for the games. The analysis is crazy. Uh, you, you have clips of training, you know. That's something that we haven't gotten to yet, you know. We're just like getting used to having clips from the game. How much we do it, you know, you do it every day, every single day. Whereas at home, we do it twice a week, in the evening or maybe in the morning. For a long time, I wanted to play. I wanted to feature in one of the teams. I remember the first time I was called up for a Super Series team, fr franchise rather, I was 18, but I had just injured by my knee so I couldn't feature. After the injury, I came back and I decided to just be a full-time forward. And, you know, it, one thing led to the other. I was called up for the Papa franchise and the next game, I was in the starting lineup. And it's kind of been an up for me ever since then. Then the African Championship in Madagascar, then the, the World Cup qualifiers that didn't go so well in Madagascar as well. Um, so it's been it's been a, it's been a great journey for me. In the next five to ten years, I'm looking to play in the World Cup. I'm looking to be an Arab Player of the Year, and I'm looking to be a, a, an ambassador of peace through rugby and music. if possible, the pathway for people to go pro, you know? Having the first one to do it, I want to set a platform, a good example. And when people hear of Kenyan players, they'll be like, yeah, you know, they're hardworking players, they're good players. I'm so psyched by stories like that. It's mm -hmm. such, you know, it's so telling about persistence, what can really avail when you just work hard. Yep, work hard, that's the key. And of course, uh, respect to him. Yeah. I think he's doing a fabulous job. And speaking of teams doing fabulous jobs, Unajua, the return leg of uh, the Elgon Cup is coming through over the weekend. So do this. We look forward to seeing you at the KRU grounds to support Team Kenya, of course, Simba ni moja. Dio kapisa, Simba ni moja. Well, before we wrap up the show, of course, we have to show love to everybody who's on the timeline. So let's go ahead and do the dang thing. Yes, we've got Josephine Cheryl, you're saying you're loving the day's episode and of course previous episodes saying the show never disappoints. Mama, that's so true. We never disappoint. Thank you, Josephine. Alvin wants to know if I'm going to pick up that basketball and do a little sum, you know, give Mike a run for his money. Well, you never know what the future holds. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe she will do that pretty soon, but it's time for us to say Kwaheri. So what we're going to do is leave you with our internet find of the week. And hey, until next time, keep, keep it Sports, Sports Central. Central. It's just not that easy. So what's coming next is going to blow your mind.